This is what I was told. Now, I didn't verify this. I was told this by my dad. Joey Gallo originally wanted to kill one of the hostages and demand a $100,000 ransom. Larry Gallo talked him out of that. But my dad told me that my dad was the one that went in to negotiate the deal. Now, this is what he told me. Hey everyone, welcome to another sit down with Michael Francis. Hope everybody is doing well. All is very blessed on this end. And as always, we give thanks to God for that. Before I get into it, you know, I can't believe it's June already. And uh, gosh, in about 30 days, less than that, I'll be leaving to the United Kingdom for my first date of the tour, July 2nd in London. Tickets are going fast. I'll be gone for about six weeks. Uh, we're doing almost 25 dates, I believe, all over the United Kingdom. Very excited about that. So all those of you in the UK, michaelfrancistour.com. If you haven't gotten your tickets yet, they're going fast. I can tell you that. They're doing a great job there promoting the event. So I hope to see many of you there. I got a lot of new followers from the UK, and I appreciate that. For those of you that haven't subscribed, subscribe. I think we're at 850,000 right now. We're on a march to a million. We're getting there. We had a surge in the past couple of weeks for some reason, so maybe that indicates you're really enjoying the content. I appreciate that very much. Just got a visit from my little dogs here on this one. This is, uh, this is uh, our beautiful Nova, who has been such a joy and a blessing to my daughter, Julia, I can tell you. So uh, anyway, for all you dog lovers there, you know how wonderful it is when you get attached to a dog, and she's just been terrific. She's been a godsend for a number of reasons. I think some of you know the story with my daughter, what happened recently, tragic event, not with her, but uh, somebody she cared about very much. But anyway, I don't know what the surge is all about, but I appreciate it, you know, thank you very much. And, uh, you know, subscribe, you know, you get alerts, you'll know what's happening before everybody else. So we appreciate it if you do that. And uh, we work pretty hard to put good content in there. We try our best and we appreciate the fact that you appreciate it. We know you have a lot of choices on YouTube. Thanks for tuning into ours. And uh, today I'm gonna do something that's kind of disturbing to me. You know, it brings back some memories that were rather unpleasant, but I've been watching The Offer, Paramount Plus's prequel to The Godfather. I've talked about it in the past. Love the series, by the way. I think it's very well done, very well acted and scripted. They do take some dramatic liberty. I am very familiar with the whole Godfather father Joe Colombo uh, relationship at that point in time. That was my era. I was there and pretty much in tune with what was going on. So episode six and seven deal more with, you know, the actual shooting of Joe Colombo. And uh, I was there that day. It was our second annual Italian American civil rights event. We had about 50,000 people at Columbus Circle, huge stage set up, and it was really going to be a tremendous event until uh, Joe Colombo was shot, seriously wounded. He didn't die at that point in time. He lingered for about seven years, basically in a coma, and then died from uh, wounds related or health issues related, I should say, to the shooting. And uh, I was there that day. I, uh, I actually had just met with Joey. He gave me some brochures to hand out. I was on the stage. And uh, he said something very nice to me at that moment. He said, you know, Mike, the league is going to help your father. And that's the first time he had really ever said that to me. And there was a lot of rumbling why the league wasn't helping my dad because my dad was framed. He was who he was, Sonny Francis, my uh, uh, Joe Colombo was underboss at one point in time. And there was some people upset that the league wasn't helping my father. And they really hadn't done anything till that point. So when he said that, I was elated. I said, wow, because that's why I was at the league, basically to help my father. You know, if you know, I think I've mentioned this in a prior video that someone very close to me, very loyal to my father by the name Artie Entrada, was actually murdered as a result of him promoting somebody at a league meeting at the Park Sheridan Hotel to almost complain about my father not being helped. Joe Colombo cut him off. He didn't uh, finish that. And Artie later on really got a tongue lashing from people. I witnessed it after the meeting was over. And only a uh, short time after that, he was murdered. 
And when I think back, he was actually murdered as a result of his speaking up for my father or allocating somebody to speak up to my father. It was kind of confusing for me. Remember, I was young. I wasn't even really a recruit yet. I was a captain in the league, but I was a recruit. I wasn't a recruit yet. Uh, my father hadn't proposed me. And I was saying, gosh, you know, what's going on? Why are they not helping my father? Why did Artie get killed? And I loved Artie. You know, I was very close with him. You know, why did this happen? So, you know, I started to witness some of the treachery that goes on in that life, not really yet realizing what was going on. But at any rate, you know, let me take you back a little bit to what really happened and why Joe Colombo was, there was an assassination attempt on his life and why he eventually died from those wounds. Uh, you know, it goes back to the Joe Gallo days. You know, Joe Gallo, I think you know who he is. He was a prominent guy in the Colombo family. He went to war with Joseph Profaci, who was the boss at that time. The Gallos had a powerful crew. He didn't want Profaci to be the boss. They went to war. The war was basically stopped when Joey Gallo went to jail. I think he got a seven or eight year prison sentence. And while he was in jail, there was peace negotiated by Joe Maioko and also some other guys that they were negotiating a peace agreement between the Gallo faction and the Profaci uh, faction. So it was negotiated, there was peace, but Profaci had no intention of keeping that peace. He didn't want it, he just did it at the time just to keep everything quiet. Joe Gallo claimed that he wasn't uh, part of the negotiation because he was in prison and he wasn't going to keep the peace. Now during that time, my boss, Carmine Persico, who was originally with the Gallows, has switched over to Mayoko and he actually had an attempt on Larry Gallo's life, one of the Gallo brothers. It failed, but he attempted it. As a matter of fact, that's why he got his name, the snake at that time, because the Gallo said he was a traitor. He was originally with that crew, and then he switched over to the Profacis. But, you know, prior to that, you know, at the start of the war, the Gallos had kidnapped uh, four guys, four Profaci guys. One of them, I think, was Profaci's brother. Another one was Sally Mosaccio, Sally the Sheik, who was uh, one of my father's major mentors in that life, Sally the Sheik. And... Um, this is what I was told. Now, I didn't verify this. I was told this by my dad. Joey Gallo originally wanted to kill one of the hostages and demand a $100,000 ransom. Larry Gallo talked him out of that. But my dad told me that my dad was the one that went in to negotiate the deal. Now, this is what he told me, because the Gallos trusted him and he eventually renegotiated that deal and walked out with the four hostages. Now that's what my dad told me. I heard that from one or two other people close to my dad, but I've never seen that written anywhere or no one else ever told me that. From what I was told that there was somebody else that negotiated that, that settlement with the Gallows. At any rate, Colombo was installed as the boss. Mayoko was the boss for a time. Then he got thrown out because he tried, from what I understand, an assassination attempt against Carlo Gambino and a few others. When they found out about it, they threw Mayoko out and Joe Colombo, who was the one who made Carlo Gambino aware that there was an assassination attempt uh, that was going to be plotted against him. Uh, he was given the title of boss of the Colombo family. Uh, Profaci had died, Joe Colombo took over, and then it became the Colombo family. When Gallo come out of prison again, he still didn't accept the fact that Joe Colombo was boss. And, you know, they called him Crazy Joe. He was kind of paranoid schizophrenic. I think he was diagnosed as that. And so there wasn't a real trust between Gallo and Colombo. I think when Gallo came out, Colombo offered him $1,000 as a peace offering. Joe Gallo didn't want to keep, uh, didn't want to accept that. He was still angry. And there was still tension at the time. And I remember that. I remember them talking about it. Now, again, I wasn't a made guy. I wasn't even a recruit at that point. But I was around at all the meetings. I did visit my father. I did ask him about it. He told me, stay away from Joey Gallo, Michael. He's crazy. And, it, and there's going to be trouble in the family. He did tell me that. And so the thought process was that uh, Joey Gallo, who had gotten close to a lot of black guys when in prison, actually put Jerome Johnson up to assassinating Joe Colombo. And it happened at that second rally. Now, I will tell you this. Joe Colombo had created a lot of bad blood. The other bosses and a lot of guys on the street, a lot of made guys, did not like the fact that he was the head of the league, that he was so outspoken. He was going on nighttime talk shows. He was out there, he was in the press. He was, I think, Times Man of the Year. 
You don't do that when you're the boss of a family. It didn't work well for John Gotti. didn't work well for Joe Colombo. You're not supposed to do that. Carlo Gambino was very upset with him about it, and I think tried to talk him out of it, said, Joey, put a lawyer up there. Put somebody else as the front person of the league. You got to back down. This isn't right. But Joe Colombo didn't honor that. Did it go to his head a little bit? Possibly. You know, did he think that he was the most qualified, that he's the guy that can rally everybody, you know, that he can get the kind of support? Well, you know, that's what he believed. In the end of the day, it didn't work out because he wasn't protected by the other bosses and the other people with strength in that family. So the story goes that Joey Gallo puts up Jerome jo Johnson. Jerome Johnson goes to the rally. He masquerades as a reporter. He had a press pass, and boom, he takes shots at uh, Joe Colombo hits him in the head, and uh, like I said, he goes into a coma. Jerome Johnson was shot immediately on the spot by, you know, some of uh, the guys that were there at that point in time. I'm not going to mention names, and that's what happens. The place went into a frenzy. I can tell you this. I had just walked down the top of the stairs from the, uh, um, uh, the stage, and the place went wild when they heard the shots ring out. I heard, I think it was Anthony or Joey Jr., Joey's been shot. Joey's been shot. Somebody yelled it out. I don't, I don't know who it was, but they were all around him, so it was very confusing, and the place went into uh, a, a frenzy, I can tell you that. Me, at my thought at that time, I was look, looking for my sister and my girlfriend, who I was there with that day, and I couldn't find them because the crowds were massive. Everybody was running in different directions. It was a horrible day and a terrible, you know, memory. I mean, it was my first, you know, experience with somebody getting shot, you know, so close to where I was and somebody that, uh, you know, that was close to me. And then the story goes, you know, that Joey Gallo was killed later on by some of Colombo's guys. Now, I know what happened there. And I can tell you that Colombo's guys and the Persico faction obviously believed that this came from Joey Gallo. Joey Gallo was later assassinated in Umberto's Clam House, you know, a couple of weeks later. The police had talked to Joey Gallo about the murder of Joe Colombo, and they were convinced, at least they said they were, that Joey Gallo had nothing to do with it, that Jerome Johnson was the lone shooter. That's nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Jerome Johnson was put up to the assassination by somebody close to the families. Now, Carlo Gambino, uh, you know, the story was that he had aligned with Joey Gallo in a way. There's some different theories out of what really happened, but I can tell you this, Joe Colombo didn't have many friends at that point among the other families. And um, they were able to pull that off. Episode seven of The Offer sets up the Colombo killing, and it was nothing like they stage it in episode seven. It was a very small stage. They had Al Ruddy spotting Jerome Johnson before he fired the shots at Joe Colombo and almost screaming out. None of that happened. The crowd they showed in episode seven was very small compared to the 50,000 plus that we had uh, there present that day to witness all of this. So it wasn't staged really well in episode seven, but it did stimulate this whole memory in me of what happened. and. Look, I heard a lot of things afterwards. I can tell you this, it was a mob hit on uh, both Joe Colombo and Joe Gallo. And I will tell you this again, the Irishman, Ed Sheerhan, he was absolutely not one of the shooters. I can tell you that 100%. He was not one of the shooters. It did come from within the family. I'm going to leave it at that. But at this point in time, no one has solved the murder of Joe Colombo. Well, they have. Jerome Johnson. But nobody... Nobody has solved the conspiracy behind that murder, uh, that assassination attempt, and nobody has solved the murder of Joe Gallo. They're unsolved murders. They're cold cases at this point. I don't know if anybody's really looking into it, uh, but they're both unsolved. But again, you know, stimulated my thought in watching The Offer, which, by the way, you know, episodes six and seven, they're really good. You know, the thing about these two episodes, think about the whole series. When you watch this whole series of The Offer, what you're seeing is they're comparing how ruthless the studio system is and the people involved in it compared to the mafia. That's what they're doing throughout the whole series. Charlie who's the head of Gulf and Western, who owns Paramount. Ruthless guy. As a matter of fact, many of the lines that he says are lines that we see later on in The Godfather. Now, I don't know if it really came that way, but they're trying to make a point that, you know, you have ruthlessness in the studio system. You have it in the government. You have it in corporate America. 
Not only in the mob. Now, in the mob, you might have more severe consequences. Who knows? In the government, people get killed also. You know, there's a lot of stuff that goes on. It's not only in the mob that this stuff happens. And this series, The Offer, really makes those comparisons very valid. Backstabbing, treachery, undermining people. It's amazing. It happens on the street, and it happens in corporate America. It's unbelievable, the comparison. And that's what I'm seeing throughout this whole series. Just wanted to make a point to that. Again, if you, you go to watch it, I guarantee you'll enjoy it. Paramount Plus, can't wait to the you know, the next couple of uh, episodes and see how it all ends. But anyway, that's it for today. You know, rather a, a, you know, a sad memory for me. Listen, people, you know I walked away from that life, and hopefully I walked away from the right reasons. I believe I did. A lot of treachery, a lot of guys I saw get killed I didn't believe needed to be killed or shouldn't have been killed. Backstepping, treachery, the whole bit, it's part of that life. It's part of life in general. And hopefully, you know, we are able to move beyond that. There's so much going on in this world today and so much going on in this country that divisiveness, it's peaking. It's, it's at a point that I've never witnessed in my life and hopefully we can revert back to more civility among all of us. So that's it for today. How do I always leave you? Same way, people. Be safe. Shout out to the ladies. Please always be aware of your surroundings. Be healthy. Make sense. Take care of yourself. God bless all of you, really mean that. Yes, I'll see you next time.